Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite minerals, the fluorite. Most of my fluorite pieces are from Elmwood, Tennessee. These are the very typical purple colored minerals. Uh, they are cubic and very characteristically they have zoned uh, characteristics. As you can see right here, see the, the outer part of the cube is, is lighter purple than the inner part. And other places you can see that too. This zonation, we call it, happening because as the crystal is forming, sometimes the um, composition of the liquid it's crystallizing from is changing just a little bit and that causes a little bit of color zonation. You can see a really pretty uh, cube right here. The reason that they form as cubes is because uh, fluorite is isometric crystallizes in the iso isometric system. So cube is one of the most common variety uh, as it crystallizes. Here's another one. On this one, the zonation is even more uh, visible. You can see that here the outermost uh, edge of the crystal is darker than the inner. It's very pretty. Actually, this, this is a bunch of low uh, fluorite cubes on, on dolomite. Uh, Elmwood is a typical Mississippi Valley type deposit where the host rock is mostly dolomite. And of course the dolomite occurs as crystals also, these white ones are uh, dolomites and they're actually growing on top of the fluorite also as you can see. But uh, on this base rock right here you can see the teeny tiny dolomite crystals and then the purple fluorites. And then there are some more low dolomite crystals on top of that. So you can see that the crystallization happens in different phases, which is kind of interesting. I collected this one in Elmwood myself. I had the chance to go to Elmwood, Tennessee, which was a really amazing time for me to be able to go. And on this low crystal, you can see a bunch of fluorite, of course. And the base here is fluorite, which is the zinc sulfide. Uh, probably I haven't mentioned the fluoride is typical. It's calcium uh, fluoride. It's CaF2. Um, but interestingly, actually, the you would think that the fluoride has um, got its name because it has fluorine in it. But in real life, actually, the fluoride was before and the fluorine was named after this mineral. So this is a really pretty... A uh, low plate in my hand, which I collected personally from Elmwood with nice fluorite crystals and sphalerite. This fluorite is from China, and as you can see, it's beautiful cubes and they have a uh, green tint to it, so somewhat green. Very pretty. I have another really interesting fluorite crystal. This is coming from Switzerland. It's pink, as you can see. And it's not cube, but octahedra. When you have an octahedra, you got four triangles on top and four triangles down. That's what we call octahedra. It's an eight a crystal which has eight crystal faces, four up as a pyramid and four down as another pyramid and we call that octahedra. Then I have another one, a really pretty green fluorite. You can see it's actually again cube. It's a penetrated uh, cube right here. And this pretty green uh, fluorite is from England. It's a very classic location. I have another really interesting piece right here where uh, this is also from Elmwood, Tennessee. Uh, in Elmwood, uh, as the crystallization was happening, different things uh, occurred. Like, first of all, the cubes are formed, then the cubes got dissolved. You can see it's completely edged right here. It got dissolved, and then Interestingly, after that, this one, this part was more 
uh, stable than the surroundings. So this corner actually stayed behind and most of the uh, fluorite cube got dissolved. So we ended up with this really interesting corner. As you can see, it's really, really, really rare. Uh, if you want to buy it, it's very, very expensive, but extremely interesting piece. That's why I guess they're selling it very expensively because you cannot really find it easily. Then I have this piece, fluorite. Um, as you could see, very, very similar to amethyst. The only way you can actually separate from separate it from the amethyst that that fluorite has really good cleavage. And um, amethyst, as you know, it's quartz, so quartz doesn't have any cleavage. Uh, fluorite has good, very almost perfect cleavage by the octahedra. However, when you hit the fluorite with a hammer, you won't be able to actually uh, form the octahedra. You have to cleave it to make it this pretty. But the other, the other way to separate it from the amethyst is that the fluorite has a hardness of four. So basically, a um, um, steel nail will scratch it easily, where the quartz, the steel nail, the steel nail will not scratch the quartz, and the quartz will scratch the glass. While this one won't. This, by the way, is a really pretty yellow fluorite with a little bit of purple in the corner.